So in this video, I will be showing you how the Calvin cycle works, which is also known as a light independent reaction and where it occurs. So first, light independent reactions. And they're more commonly known as it's more commonly known as the Calvin cycle. And so overall what this does is it's essentially a cycle. It's a cyclic series of reactions. And then what it does is it uses carbon dioxide to produce sugars slash carbs which are like essentially the same thing sugars make up carbs um, and this is commonly known as C3 photosynthesis the Calvin cycle And so once again, uh, to reiterate one of my last videos, this occurs in the stroma. And the stroma, just to recap, is essentially the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. And so now let's start talking more about what exactly happens. Let me clear this. So first, you start off here with six CO2s. And then, so the six carbon dioxides combine with six ruby Ps. And essentially what ruby P is, it's just a simple five carbon molecule. And so it combines and makes a six carbon chain. So six carbons two, three, four, five, six. And then now you see here water comes in and essentially hydrolyzes a bond, breaks the bond right here to essentially make two of them. And then there, then it turns into, so before you had six of them, six of these uh, six carbon molecules and then that splits up and now you have 12 three carbon molecules and sorry I think I forgot to mention there's an enzyme that essentially helps catalyze the first step and so it helps uh, combine the carbon the CO2 and the ruby P and that enzyme so essentially it goes to work here somewhere around there before the waters and that enzyme is called Rubisco. And so what we talked about so far is stage one. And stage one is called carbon fixation. And so now let's talk about the second stage. So let me clear some of this. And so now what happens is the 12 PGAs there, essentially it gets phosphorylated, like the ATP and the NADPH come in. And you probably won't have to know the exact details, but essentially the ATP and the NADPH come in and help convert the 12 PGA into 12 G3P and the G3P is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate you won't have to know the name I'm sure like most classes the G3P is fine and then the G3P gets converted into glucose sucrose essentially the carb chain right here and then it goes back ATP is being used to then convert it into six ruby P's and so, like me, you may have 
gotten a little lost as how you got that to suddenly just appear. So let's let's count the number of carbons that you have in each reaction. So let me clear all of this. And so let's start here with the ruby P. So here you have six five carbon things so that's thirty carbons and then add another six and then here to go here and then now here you have thirty six because it's twelve three carbon um, molecules now you go here and then it's another twelve three carbon molecules however six leaves so thirty six oops I won't write there thirty six minus six equals thirty and so now you have thirty and essentially what the G3P does is it gets combined and then so essentially the twelve G3P becomes ten G3P after you use two of them to make the glucose and so now you recombine them to make a five carbon molecule and then you get that and so essentially this whole thing is like a as it's called a cycle for a reason what is overall really occurring is you're taking the carbons from carbon dioxide from the carbon dioxide and then making a um, carb out of it and then so you may ask like oh what happens with the ATP and ADPH and all of that stuff well that was generated by the light reaction and so it's constantly regenerated and it's a very very efficient cycle the light and the light independent cycle.